Previet comrades, how are you? This is the professor. Let me adjust my mic. I am in my Gitmo outfit, ready to be taken away over my pro-Russian views. I hope they have a nice cell for me uh, that overlooks the ocean. That would be very, very nice. I um, Oh, uh, one thing before we get going here. I want to say thank you so much for all the messages that you guys have been sending. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages on VK, a couple thousand a week, and I try to go through them um, in order. So be patient, please. Uh, most of you are very, very patient. Some of you get really mad, like it's been like three days and I haven't responded to you. I'm trying. I'm one man trying to go through these messages and answer everybody as best I can. So please be patient, and and I will I will I will read your message uh, as soon as I can. So thank you for that. That's the housekeeping portion of it. We'll kind of set this aside, and um, I want you to film. Thus, the eyes are a little teary-eyed. I cried during this film. Uh, this film upset me. I think um, Russian films are starting to make sense to me. There's a saying, the more you know, the more you see. And, and this is starting to happen. This happened to me with the Indian films. You start understanding more. You start to see more. You're, you're starting to... to digest and understand the culture more it's starting to kind of come into you easier if that makes any sense uh, for instance I just saw the um, why we fight the 1943 war film and after seeing that films like the dawns here are always quiet like made sense I understood why they were out in the forest more like I, things it, it was it was it's a, it's coming together but the film Stalingrad made a lot more sense a lot of this stuff starts like oh Oh, and uh, The Cranes Are Flying was one of those films. Um, I, I think this film kind of has, has, to me, kind of taken the curtain and pulled it back on the Russian soul. It, it helps me to understand how what happened to Russia's psyche after World War II, right? I think it, it really kind of helps me to see how Russia views the world a little bit more, how Russia views itself a little bit more, uh, the, the, the pain that Russia went through. It became very personal, I think, in this film. When I was watching 1943, and I said this in the, in the film review uh, that I did on it, there's a scene where kind of um, uh, in the documentary the Russian strategy is to kind of not retreat but fall back to the next line of defense as the Nazis come in. You kind of fight, 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 fall back and scorch the earth so there's nothing they can use. And you're going to pull them deeper, deeper, deeper into Russia where you're not going to have supply lines. You're not going to have any kind of raw materials around you to use. And there was a scene where this woman was setting her house on fire and she turned and looked at the camera and was like, uh... And that just really struck me, like, whoa, that is dedication, you know, with a smile. I mean, it was like, uh, do all things without arguing and complaining, you know? And she really kind of demonstrated that. But I think there is a real pain to this, right? I don't think you can torch your house or do these great sacrifices for your country and not have any kind of emotional uh, co-responding to you or, or vibrations come back to you. I'm sure that there is... There are people who were who gave great sacrifices for Russia, in and, and the the consequences of those things have ramifications that affect you as an individual. And that's kind of what we saw here. Um, I thought the uh, the film is kind of based around a doctor, if I understood it right. I didn't have um, I didn't have. Um, subtitles uh, so I did my best I watched it a couple times so if I'm, I'm, if I'm messing something up through interpretation uh, forgive me I went and read some notes about it afterwards and the film was kind of based around a family kind of I mean we, we have a dad and I think he was a doctor and um, you know there's a son named Boris a daughter Erna mom and nephew uh, Mark and the, the film really kind of focuses in on this character, Veronica, who was, let me see if I get this, 
she was Boris's. At first, I thought it was wife, but I don't think so. I think they it was the girlfriend, and um, and it kind of really uh, this character Veronica just. She was a very compelling figure in the film. I found myself mesmerized by her. I thought to myself, this woman, beautiful, great actress. Like, you know, how did she not end up in, like, every film? And uh, Tatiana, uh, am I saying that right? Tatiana... Samolvia. I hope I'm saying that right. What a great performance. I mean, I was I was struck by her. And, and then I, I started to think and wonder to myself, um, how much of her is the filmmaker really using, like, um, a symbol for the Russian women? during the war. You know, that was kind of my thought, the process of watching her through this film was kind of carrying on. Is she really becoming a symbol? Is she being a tool for the Russian director to tell a story about how this war affected the Russian women? And that's really kind of an interesting idea to me. That's really kind of a fascinating idea to me because we don't, we don't think about that. We don't think about that in America. You know, we have... Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the Americans are pretty good at boots on the ground, right? We tend to like to occupy and be imperialistic in our in our efforts. It's never it's never leading really leading from behind. It's like you know, uh, let's send in soldiers. What? There's a fight at McDonald's. Let's send in soldiers. I'm just saying, right? I'm not trying to be flippant or disrespectful, but I'm just saying it seems like that's what we like to do. We like to occupy. Um, and even in America where we seem to be in war after war after war we don't think about the cost to the family we don't think about the cost to the individual right Americans are very much warlike warmongers it's in the things that we do right it's in the things that we say it's in how we communicate Russians point out to me all the time as I interact with them on VK your interactions are like you know I gave you 10 pages of my thought on something you know 10 paragraphs and you came back with three lines it's it's just how we are I mean it, it's nothing it's not uh, it's it's not a, a personal attack I think it's just you start to kind of focus in on the American mentality and it is very much like like you know let's get to it boom 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 boom, boom very sequential, very boom, 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 boom. And you don't think about the ramifications at all. You just do it. You focus so much on the, on what is at hand that you don't see the big picture here. And I think this film was a nice pivot job to see the big picture and then focus in on the small as, as, as where you don't get that much in American cinema, in American life, in American politics and war. Um... So we followed this. We followed this woman. We followed her story. And I don't know if I'll be able to fit this all in one video. I don't know because I, there's so much I got to say about this film. Um, I think what I'll do is we'll split this up into multiple videos here, uh, just because of time's sake. I don't. I don't really want to do like a two-hour video and people be like, "Oh, I can't watch it." Maybe it's only the Americans who won't watch it. Maybe the Soviets will watch it. Uh, the Russians will watch it. Um, but we see this 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 tension grow, this call to war, in that there's this great push for everybody to to volunteer into the war, to to become part of this great patriotic fever that is just spreading through Russia. Boris has volunteered to defend the homeland, um, and and it really kind of makes Veronica. She's really sad about this, right? She's really sad. Um, about this and um, she is now going to live with the family uh, with great sadness uh, she doesn't realize that he's been killed right she doesn't realize that at all and um, 
you know, she's kind of holding on hope, beyond hope for Boris to come back, her true love, and she's going to bunker down with, with the family, Boris's family, and kind of, you know, just wait. You know, uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best, is the American saying. Um, we, we see, um, well, I guess I'll kind of just try to wrap this up and push through it here. Uh, we see the, the Blitzkrieg come, we see the Germans do this, and people are taking refuge under... Um, in the subways, right? So they're hiding in the subways. They're not in their apartments. Veronica and Mark decide that they're not going to leave. They're going to stay in the apartment. And what happens in the apartment? They don't show it. They don't. They. I think the scene and the editing and what led up to it implies it. And I think if you watch the rest of the film, it kind of comes back and answers the question for you. But what it looks like to me is Mark rapes her. That's what it looked like to me. Like, that was my takeaway. Like, this... This piece of crap. You're going to do this during the time. I mean, you're you're like no better than the Nazis, dude. I mean, when when I watched 1943 and they were talking about what the Nazis did to these young girls, come on, man. You know, come on. The savages, savages. And I got a video coming too about about war with America because it's. I'm. I'll, we'll put that on another video. But I but I get this question a lot from the Russians. You know, do you think America is going to invade Russia? Short answer, no. But I'll tell you who I think is going to pick a war with Russia. And it ain't going to be America. Uh, but another video. This guy does this. And then the family thinks, like, you know, now she feels guilted. Like, I got to marry this guy? You know, he raped me and that protect my honor publicly? You know, what, I got to... And it looks like to the family, like, what, you whore, what did you do? You just betrayed Boris. He could come back any day. This is what you do. Times get tough and tough get going and you leave. You leave. And you see this whole fallout, this whole ramifications of, of this action. And she's just trying to keep her head above water. This woman's acting was outstanding in this film. I cried. I was just like, look at me. I was all teary-eyed mess, snot bubbles. Like, just, oh. <sighs> so, um, life goes on. And she's kind of got to wear this letter, the scarlet letter on her forehead that's like, you know, I can't believe you did that to Boris, you know. And so she's had it. Like, her 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 pain is building up. She's getting to the point of suicidal. She's going to go commit suicide. She's going to jump off the bridge. And as she does it, she notices a young boy who almost gets hit by a car. And her, her, her you know, her self-preservation mode for for this young boy, like the goodness of her, of the Russian women, just kind of comes to like, oh, I can't do that. I gotta. So she she saves the boy whose name is Boris. Oh, oh, right here. Oh, I was like, oh, oh. she saves the boy, and then the family starts figuring things out. Wait, w wait a minute. What happened? Oh, Mark, you've been naughty, right? So. The family is understood. You know, the thing that 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 shame is is being kind of undone, unmelted, and she's you know kind of being welcomed back into the family. We understand, and you know, this all this kind of stuff happens here, and then we get word from a soldier that shows up that knew Boris. I think he was Boris's best friend. I think, or they grew up together. I mean, if I followed it right, but Boris died trying to save his life, or Boris died saving his life. And uh, Veronica doesn't want to hear that. Doesn't want to hear that. No, no, he's still alive. He's still alive. And ultimately, she finds out it's true. And, um, oh, man. I just, I, you know, I got to internalize this. I got to think about this because I really do think when I was, I'm watching this, I am getting a, a better understanding into the Russian soul. I like, like how they view the world, how 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 they view the war why world war ii is such a like like such a important thing for them you know the sacrifice i mean to reflect upon the sacrifice that they made as a people is an amazing thing and uh i walked away with this thinking first of all um thinking uh this woman is like a really good actress really really good actress and um, Oksana, Oksana suggested this film to me. Well, a lot of people suggested to it, but she told me that this is a really, really good film. 
Oksana, I, I have to say this film was incredible. It was an incredible film. And I'd like to ask you, Oksana, because you're really active on VK with me. Um, how much of this do you think is, could, could you look at this film and get a better understanding of, the, of how Russian women view the world? Is there, is there a connection? Is there a correlation? Or am I just crazy and I'm, 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 I'm making a connection where it doesn't exist? Um, boy, oh boy, this film was... This film was, was I, think this, I think this film was probably the best Russian film that I've seen so far. Um, definitely most emotional. It really was. Um, so, anyways... I have ranted long enough. Thank you so much, my friends. I really appreciate all the love and support. And uh, remember, please be patient. I'm trying to get through all the messages as I can. We got The Americans episode number two up on the website, Dark Sky Radio. You can go listen to that. I am joined by my first convert from being anti-Russian to pro-Russia. That is my friend Action Jackson. His real name is Bill. Uh, but we, we pick uh, fake names to go on the internet with because we thought it would be funny. Uh, to be called the Professor and Action Jackson and the Warrior Queen instead of just our real names. Um, It's like pretend time. Uh, So I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much. Keep all the messages coming. I really appreciate it. And uh, peace and much love to you. And I'll catch you guys later.